let's take a look at how to create frequency charts. The graph below shows how many different hobbies each student in Graydon's class has. Use the graph provided to complete the frequency chart below. Now, there's a couple things you want to look at when you're trying to interpret a frequency chart. And the first thing I'm going to notice is that in my table, hobbies count, notice, is in the X column because the X column would be on the left and the Y column would be on the right. That means on my X axis, the one that runs from left to right, these numbers, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 29, and 30 to 34, would represent the hobbies count. In the Y column, that says students, so here it just says values, that must be how many students. And I'm just going to abbreviate here. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what we're looking at, notice they filled in the other numbers for us. And you can even use this as a little bit of a hint. Notice 20 to 24 hobbies was answered by six students. And you can see that 20 to 24 students, the top of that bar is up here at six. For, 20 to 20, for 25 to 29, we had three students answer that they had 25 to 29 hobbies. Well, you can see, same thing, the top of the bar is at three. For 30 to 34, the top of our bar is at two. So if we look at that same pattern and say, well, how many students would have answered 15 to 19? 15 to 19 is that first bar in our frequency chart. And I can see that it reaches, the top of that reaches up to four. So four students answered that they had 15 to 19 hobbies. Use the graph provided to complete the frequency chart below on how many eggs different goose species lay. Okay, and again, taking a look at our table, we can see that the number of eggs is on the x-axis. And that the number of different goose species I'll put SP over here for short, is on the Y axis, right? This is our Y up and down axis. This is our X left to right. Okay, so 40 to 59, we want to know, well, how many species lay 40 to 59 eggs? Okay, well, 40 to 59 is this bar in the frequency chart. So if I look to the top, I can see it reaches to the height of five, so five species lay eggs in that range of numbers. The data below is the grades from a quiz written by Ashley's class. And we want to use the graph provided to complete the frequency chart. Okay, so we can tell the students' values are on the x-axis. And the mark, I'll put M, is on the y-axis. All right, so 25 to 29 students had what mark? Okay, so I want to look for where I see 25 to 29, and that's here in my first bar on this frequency chart. And I can see that it reaches up to a height of 5. So that means the mark was 5. The graph below shows how many different hobbies each student in Williams' class has. Use the data provided to complete the frequency chart below. Okay, and the missing value is for the eight to nine hobbies chart. And I can see hobbies is on the x-axis down here. So if I go to eight to nine, this would be my bar right here, which reaches up to a height of one. Okay, this chart looks a little different. Notice they, instead of giving us a bar chart, this frequency graph has a line graph. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We can see that the number of eggs is in the X column. So that's going to be on our X axis where it says series one. 
and the species is in the y column, so that's going to be on our y axis. So I want to look for 30 to 39. So I that because that's where my missing value is. So 30 to 39, I can see is lined up with this point here. And if I take this point and read right across to the y axis, it has a y value of 2. So notice I'm going horizontally straight across from this point to read the value on the axis of 2. The data below shows how many games Gabriel completed at different times. Use the data provided to complete the frequency chart below. Okay, so they gave us all of the data points. Okay, so the question mark is how many had a length between six and eight hours? Okay, so if we think about the numbers that would be in that range, we wanna see anything that had six hours, seven hours, or eight hours, right? That would be the numbers for six to eight hours. So I'm just gonna look at all these data points and I'm gonna underline anything that's a six, seven, or eight just to make it easy to count. So I've got a seven, okay, not 11, not 10, that's too high. We've got an eight, we've got a seven, we've got an eight. 15, 14, 11 are all too high, 13, we've got another eight, seven, eight. 14's too high, five's too low, 13's too high, we've got another six, eight, seven, and five is too low. So again, all I did was underline any numbers that were six, seven, or eight, and now I'm just gonna count how many of them there were. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that would mean we would fill in a 10. There were 10 games that were six to eight hours long. Here we have another line graph. The graph below shows how many different hobbies each student in Ethan's class has. Use the data in the line graph to complete the frequency chart below. Okay, so again, this one is a line graph. I can see the hobbies is on the X column, so that's gonna be on my X axis here where it says series one. And students is on my Y axis. Okay, and my question mark is in this row, 100 to 119 hobbies was the answer given by how many students? So I wanna start by going to where it has 100 to 119, and I can see that that's this point right here, right, it's directly above that number range. Well, how many students answered that? I'm just gonna go flat across or horizontally straight across to read the value on my y-axis. And I can see it's at a value of four. So four students had that many hobbies between 100 and 119.